Hey everyone, so today I want to talk about a very common problem for oboists and a very effective solution for this that's actually away from the oboe. And it is how to solve blurps or when you get those extra intervals between challenging fingerings on the oboe. Not even challenging fingerings, but it's easy to get a second note in between. So I'll give an example. Um, maybe D to F. It's easy to get that E in between, right? Or A to C is a notorious one. What about F to A is a very, F sharp, sorry, to A. F sharp to A is a very notorious one. You can get that ex some extra note in, whether it's a B flat or a G, depends which finger of yours is being sloppy. But, um, and then there are many others in the Strauss Concerto, right? G to C sharp. just to be sloppy on that, you know what I mean? So, uh, and uh, oh, B to C, sh high, high B to C sharp. You know, any, any high note fingering too, it doesn't matter. Or, um, you know, uh, yeah, there's so many, you guys. I could, I could go, go on and on, but let's get to the solution. So um, this is such a, this is something that Miss Stroman at Indiana University, um, my teacher in undergrad taught me. And that is to, instead of trying to hash it out on the oboe for God knows how many minutes, just take your arms like this, cross them, put your hands like this. You could do it on your legs too, but I like to do it here. You could. And just play the interval that you're having cha uh, challenges with. Just finger, finger that interval. So say I'm going E flat to F, I'm getting a blurb. Um, try, try, try that. Oh boy, do I need a haircut. Um, e flat to F. So I, and I'm feeling everything, me moving the half hole in coordination. And the thing is just do it very slowly as, so you feel the cushioning. You feel the cushioning. It's as if you're feeling the oboe side of things and your side of things. So you're feeling the cushioning, right? And just go between that interval, feeling that cushioning. Then say in the same piece you have, say you're playing the Strauss. Before I played the Strauss, I used to do a series of like of, of these on different intervals that were giving me problems, right? So, so G to C sharp is very common that me, yeah, uh, the G to C sharp, sorry, I don't have perfect pitch. Um, yeah, so I'm doing G to C sharp now. See? Feeling that. And now A to C, right? That's another common one. I mean, I'm just going to stick to the Strauss as an example. Also, B to C sharp, right? Yeah, and C sharp to D, even high C sharp to D. This kind of thing, you know, where you're exchanging. It's almost, Miss Stroman used to say, feel like you're, you're, you're exchanging the weight between the fingers that are going up and down, right? Feeling that cushion, A to C, of course, I said, you know, also B to C sharp in the Strauss, right? B to C sharp. That's a very common one. So because you have all those fingers moving, right? Um, so yeah, this is, the, the, this is a great exercise. And it takes like 30 seconds to go through a series of them. I mean, you only need to do it for a little bit and it'll clean it up. And so this is an exercise I would recommend doing sometimes even if I don't have the time to do all of my scales before I go to rehearsal or to do to do something, I'll I'll do a few things away from the oboe. First, I'll you know do my forte piano exercise, or I'll just do a couple of you know something like that to get the air moving. But for the fingers, I'll I'll just think about the piece that I'm playing in rehearsal, and I'll just do on my arm, I'll just mime those fingerings again, feeling the distribution of the weight of my fingers on my arm. And it works way better than doing it on the oboe, I have to say. When I do it on the oboe, I just get lost in kind of the mechanism and, and kind of, you know, in my head whining about, oh, why doesn't this just happen? When you do it on your arm, it really smooths things out, you guys. And then you, you, when you go back to the oboe, you'll feel that it's so much easier and so much cleaner, okay? 
and it also it f it'll happen more automatically so you don't have to use your fingers in a heavy way you don't have to smash your fingers down sometimes people who do have great technique they still kind of smash their fingers down because um they they want to make sure that they don't you know miss it or get one of those miscoordinations but what that does is it makes the music less vocal it makes it less lyrical it makes it less, um, it makes it sound more technical as opposed to expressive too, having very, very hard fingers, right? So, um, or fingers that, um, where the air doesn't lead, right? The air should always lead and the fingers should follow, right? Um, that's what Mr. Oman used to say, air faster than your fingers. And um, uh, so this is just a great technique. I hope you guys try it out. Um, it's extremely effective. And um, if you have problems with blurps, I am notorious for them. I still remember um, uh, I had auditioned for a summer festival and Miss Stroman, uh, you know, did, like took, took me aside and said, listen to this tape. She was like, everything is, is pretty nice. Like, you know, intonation, the ideas, expression, everything's nice, but do you hear all these blurps? Do you hear all of these s s tiny miscoordinations in your technique? And I really feel like that kept me, you know? So um, it is important, it is something to sort out. And you can do it, you know, I, I, you, in your warm up, you could just do a series of blurps, right? A series of, oh, I have problem with this always. And I actually just do that in my warm up now where I think of every possible miscoordination interval, interval that could be miscoordinated. Um, on the oboe and I just do a series of those it takes me all but one or two minutes and it saves me so much time hashing those out on the oboe in the practice session so please try this out and I hope this helps